Okay, thank you. So welcome to uh, this presentation at DebConf. Uh, so this was intended as above. Uh, so before I start, I'd like to know who is already developing in uh, Ruby or maintaining Ruby packages. Okay, thank you. So um, I have quite a lot of slides for above. But it, this will serve as an introduction uh, and then we can discuss various things. Um, so uh, Ruby is a scripting language uh, which uh, helps, solving, which helps to solve similar, similar problems uh, to Perl and Python. So usually you can use uh, Ruby instead of Perl of Pi or Python. It's about the same age as uh, Python, uh, which looks a bit strange because it looks le less popular than Python. Uh, probably the fact that it started in uh, Japan stayed quite um, confidential outside Japan for a while. It didn't help getting, get it at the same level of popularity as Python. Uh, so Ruby is very popular in um, web, uh, web applications and cloud, which are areas where Debian is not very popular, which also probably makes it uh, look like less popular from a Debian perspective. It's also quite popular in sysadmin circles with tools like uh, Puppet and Chef written in Ruby, which are the main uh, users of Ruby outside of uh, web applications. So it's above, don't hesitate to uh, ask questions in the middle if you disagree with something or want to comment on some, something. So let's look at uh, Ruby features. Um, so it's a language that was developed um, by being inspired uh, by other languages. It wasn't developed uh, like uh, by someone who thought that uh, he knows the way things should be without looking at uh, some, somewhere else. It's deeply inspired from uh, Perl, Smalltalk, and Lisp. Uh, so, for example, uh, the Smalltalk community is usually quite, quite uh, proud of uh, its language, but when you talk to uh, Smalltalk um, uh, small fans, you tell them about Ruby and ask them about Ruby, they say, well, Ruby, it's really nice, it's like Smalltalk, but with a better syntax. So it's quite nice to see that um, uh, some people adopt from the small talk community, which is considered quite uh, pure as an object-oriented language, adopt Ruby. So Ruby is uh, deeply object-oriented. It's inspired by um, functional languages and aims to, uh, to have a lightweight syntax. So that's an example that is not so simple, but it does a lot of things. So imagine you have um, a data, a, an array or a list of objects called bugs. And the objects has a message such as severity. In Ruby, you can write something like that. You can write uh, bugs uh, dot select, so called a select method. And pass it um, a block, which is similar to a lambda in Python. So for each object, uh, you call, uh, you, you check whether the severity equals serious. Uh, and then you get another list as a result, and which only, where only, with only the bugs where the severity is serious. And then you can f do another filter to reject the bugs uh, where the package name is one of the pseudo packages. That's another list, for example. And then you can, uh, so you get a list as a result with only the real RC bugs. And then you can reorganize the list by grouping it by source package name. So you get a, a hash with a, where each value is a list of bugs. So you can do that in, uh, well, three lines because you have to, the first line is quite long. But, uh, Oh, and another feature of uh, Ruby is that usually you don't use um, uh, for or while iterators. You just use uh, methods such as um, each. Uh, so you do, f so for example, you can use a list and do list name dot each. And for each value in that list, you execute a block. So you always iterate over other, over other objects, which is very different from, iter from doing uh, for i in uh, 1 to 10, do something. So it's, it's really comfortable to write code in Ruby, and often it makes, co it makes code um, easier to read. When you, 
when you know when you know the Ruby syntax, it's quite easy to read that uh, left to right. So that was about uh, Ruby features. So now I'm going to talk about Ruby anti-features. <laughs> the slide's a bit more <laughs> heavy. So first, well, so there are several uh, things that are suboptimal uh, in Ruby. The first one is uh, the development community. So it's, it was mainly, it, 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 origin, it originates from uh, Japan and currently there are still two development mailing lists. So Ruby Core, which is in English, and Ruby Dev, which is in Japanese, which is fine, but many discussions happen on Ruby Dev. So if you don't read uh, Japanese, and don't write Japanese, you can't influence um, the, the processes. So all decisions uh, are announced on Ruby Core, but often it's too late to change what happened. So that's a bit strange, especially when you get, uh, sometimes you get bug reports, or well, you find bug reports, you know that's the problem that you are having, but everything is in Japanese, so it's quite hard to <laughs> understand what's the, what's the real problem and what's the fix. Um, I'm not sure, I was wondering if um, Objective Camel was, with, was doing the same thing or not, you know? Um, does Objective Camel as a French uh, mailing list for developers? It's English, only English, okay. Um, another problem with uh, Ruby is uh, the release management. Uh, so there are at, uh, currently several branches which are, which are actively developed. So there's a 1.8 branch, um, uh, which is uh, the old version, the old um, implementation of Ruby. Uh, so one question is uh, whether there will be a Ruby 1.8.8. This current version is 1.8.7. Uh, it's likely uh, that there won't be uh, a new uh, a new 1.8 version. That's a reference to the bug. If you want to to check the discussion, but it's not completely sure that uh, it won't happen. In the same time, there are several other uh, development branches. So there's 1.9.2, which is the current stable branch, uh, but it has quite low adoption compared to 1.8. So. The upstream developers say that people should use that and people use that. Uh, there's also 193 that was just branched off uh, Trunk uh, two weeks ago, which is the next table release. And there's Trunk, which is a bleeding edge, bleeding edge branch. So working with uh, four different branches can be, can be fine. The problem is uh, that there's cl clearly um, a manpower problem. And for example, there are many bugs that are only fixed in uh, two of those two of those branches. For example, there, there's recently, um, there was recently a security issue in Ruby, and it was fixed in 1.8 and trunk. And uh, well, and that was before 1.93 was branched of trunk, but uh, they released a new version of 1.92 without fixing the security issue. So you really need to to check what they are doing. It's really it's really hard. Um, another thing related to that is that um, uh, usually they don't support uh, all of the architectures that Debian is, support, is supporting. They mainly support uh, MD64 and IS386. Um, besides that, uh, we are on our own, basically. And when we report issues about uh, other Debian architectures, they don't really care. So we have to fix uh, them ourselves, which might not always be easy. Um, another issue with the Ruby community is the advocacy of developer-only tools for everybody. So one big, uh, one tool that has a lot of hype in the Ruby community is RVM. Uh, so RVM is a bash script uh, that can check out using Git a uh, snapshot of the interpreter and build it locally and install it locally. And then you can switch between uh, several implementations of the interpreter uh, on your own machine. So that's really great for developers who want to use uh, the latest version of Ruby, but not so great for sysadmins who have no, who are required to install that by, by, their, by, their, by, by their developers. Um, and another tool is uh, Ruby Gems, uh, which is a Ruby specific package manager. For those of you who know Python, it's similar to Python X. 
so it's a really, really great tool for developer because it enables developer to get the latest um, version of a given package. And it makes it really easy to distribute uh, packages in a quite clean way. So there are many small uh, Ruby packages because of that, many small Ruby gems because of that, because it's really that simple to release a 100 lines um, uh, package. But then uh, the Ruby community seems to think that uh, that's the only way that Ruby software should be distributed. And so there's uh, quite a lot of tension between uh, that and uh, Debian packages. So one common opinion in uh, the Ruby community is that uh, packages are, are useless and people should just use uh, RVM and Ruby gems. So it's quite hard to, uh, well, one can feel demotivated about that. <laughs> so if you want a long version of this, uh, there's a blog post uh, that I wrote uh, uh, back in January when I, when I actually decided to stop doing uh, Ruby stuff. And then the discussion was quite interesting and I changed my mind. I didn't, I didn't quite like, I don't quite like to, to do that, but, uh, uh, well, I decided to continue. Any comments, uh, questions? No. So Ruby in Debian is maintained by two teams. So the first one is uh, PKG Ruby, which maintains the interpreters. So that's uh, Ruby 1.8 and Ruby 1.9.1. So that's Akira, Daigo, and me. And there's a second team, uh, which is called uh, PKG Ruby Extras, which maintains all the Ruby libraries, well, which maintains Ruby libraries and applications, not necessarily all of them. So on Alios, there are 29 members listed. Uh, there are, there's uh, quite a lot of DDs, also members of, members of the team, but uh, most of them are, are quite uh, inactive or are, are really, well, don't really, aren't very active. So the ones that are the most active are, um, well, Vincent Fourmont is quite active, uh, Andrej is quite active, mostly on his packages, uh, me, uh, Gunnar is quite active. And Antonio Tassilo is, uh, um, uh, was just, just became a DD like three weeks ago and does a lot of great work. I, mean, I hope that he will continue. <laughs> if he's listening, <laughs> please don't leave the team because <laughs> it would be <laughs> really hard for the team. And there are also quite a lot of people maintaining uh, Ruby packages outside the team. Uh, so as usual in Debian, uh, the two teams are largely understaffed, which is probably the case uh, everywhere. Uh, and if you want to join uh, as a pointer. So the team documentation is quite good. I improved it just before uh, DevConf. Uh, that's the uh, mailing list that we use for discussion and that's the IRC channel that we use for discussion. So I'm going to talk a bit about the relationship between Debian and the Ruby community. So going back to the uh, anti features. Uh, so as I said before, the uh, there's quite a lot of tensions between, with some members of the Ruby community saying that uh, our, what we do is useless, basically. And so during the recent months, uh, af after I decided to continue doing a Ruby packaging, we fixed quite a lot of uh, issues which were not really, which we didn't consider uh, as problems, but the Ruby community considered as problems. So for example, we, uh, at some point in the past, like, Four, five, or, five or six years ago, uh, the standard library was split into uh, several packages. And we had like 15 packages for the whole standard library. It improved, so uh, gradually over time, we reduced the number of packages. And currently, uh, that's, the lab, that's the packages that build from the Ruby 1.8 well, source. So the, if you install this and this, you have all the standard library except uh, libtcltk, which is not something that most people need anyway. Um, to make people happy, we also added a Ruby 1.8-full package that just depends on all of them. That way, it's easy for people who, to say, just install Ruby 1.8-full, and they got everything. Um, 
Another thing that we changed recently is that now you can switch between Ruby implementations using the update alternative system. Uh, so you can, if you want to use, uh, so the default in Debian is still 1.8, but if you want to try 1.9, uh, you can just use update alternatives to change to 1.9, then all your apps will run with 1.9. So this is about the, this has the same level of support as for Java, which means that uh, it might break. Yeah. Not everything uh, completely works with, with 1.9, but we hope that most of it is uh, covered. We'll show later how we ensure that. Uh, another thing that we changed recently is that now when you install a gem, uh, the executable files that are installed by the gem uh, now land in a user local bin which means that it's in the pass and it's uh, executable. Uh, it wasn't the case before, which was a huge source of tension with the Ruby community. And uh, gem update uh, dash dash system uh, was re-enabled, but you have to, so what's, what that does is that it updates Ruby gems itself. So it replaced uh, what you installed with uh, uh, apt with something that is downloaded uh, from the internet. So it's, it was, it's probably, well, it's a bit strange to have that on a Debian system, but since everybody complains and you have to make your user happy, uh, it's probably better to have it uh, working and then, uh, well, you, ha you have to set an environment variable to say that, that you are really sure that you want to do that before it happens, which sounds like a reasonable compromise. So, uh, with all those changes, I think that there's no, uh, that, the, that the Ruby community doesn't have anything to complain about Debian anymore because we implemented basically what they wanted. Uh, but well, some people still whine and uh, consider Debian and Ubuntu as uh, uh, completely uh, obsolete and crippling uh, Ruby, but well, you can't make everybody happy. So now uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Gem2Deb, which is uh, our new, new packaging framework. So in the past, we were using uh, a CDBS-based um, uh, helper that was called, that was in the package Ruby uh, PKG tools. So we moved uh, since uh, a few months ago to Gem2Deb. So what Gem2Deb does is it takes a, a gem uh, turn it into a Debian source package and then into a Deb, a Deb package. So it generates a rather clean uh, Debian source package. So uh, to compare it to what other teams do, it's, it does both uh, DH, DH make Perl part, so there's a DH make Ruby, and uh, DH Perl, which is used during the build process, which is replaced by DH Ruby. So it's DH based. Uh, it tries to do almost everything automatically and uh, it, it helps to support um, several Ruby implementations. It means that we build packages uh, both for 1.8 and 1.9 and run the test suits both for 1.8 and 1.9. Uh, we use a single binary package, uh, which is called ruby-foo, with foo being the gem name. Uh, that's really interesting because it means that we can easily add uh, another Ruby implementation without having to introduce uh, additional binary package, which was the case before when we were using uh, uh, libfoo-ruby 1.8 or libfoo-ruby 1.9. Uh, so we run test suits after the build and the implementation is, uh, so it's both a DH build system and a sequence which is just uh, technical DH stuff. Um, and it's about 50 lines of Perl and the rest of it is Ruby. So all the important stuff is in Ruby. So I will, uh, th does someone ask questions about this? Or comments? Oh, the discussion will be, will be short, it seems. <laughs> I will just do a demo of this, if it works. Um, yeah, yeah. That's good, probably. I can, or maybe I will, um, I think my GNOME terminal is, uh, check. I think that usually, usually works better. So, let's say, okay. 
Oh, before doing the demo, we'll just talk about transition. So, um, so, so we want to transition to gem 2 dev for all packages in Debian. Uh, so each package currently in Debian must be mi migrated to gem 2 dev uh, So that's the uh, ideal line of progress. That's the uh, date of uh, WC freeze. Uh, and so we are looking quite bad currently. Um, it's not that bad because uh, quite a lot of packages can be removed. We have quite a lot of uh, old uh, Ruby gems that are not really used that we could remove instead of migrating to gem to dev. But that's a bit faster than migrating them. Um, so help is very welcomed for to do, to work on that. Uh, and another good point about uh, Ruby gems is that uh, on rubygems.org, which is a uh, central hub where all gems uh, can be found, uh, there's a list of, uh, well, there's a sort of popularity contest about gems. So we know what is important to package and what is not so important to package. Um, so that's the web page listing the current status of the transition. So you just have lots of packages. And let's try to migrate uh, completely randomly chosen uh, SQLite 3-Ruby. Uh, So to migrate it, I need a network, but I have a backup plan. Let's try to do it with the network. OK, let's switch to the backup plan. <laughs> uh, so let's say that uh, I could uh, gem fetch uh, that gem. Yeah. So I could normally do that, and that would work. In that case, since uh, I can't download it, I will use the local copy. So when I do that, go. Uh, I will restart. Can you still read the screen? It's fine, probably. So what it does is that it creates uh, a source table from the gem. So it extracts the gem and builds a, a TGZ from it, uh, which means that you can also start from a TGZ. If, you, if your uh, Ruby library is not provided as a gem, you can just start with the TGZ also works. So you start with uh, this. Then it creates a source package from that TGZ. And then it builds the package. So the goal is to have is to have a tool that can be used uh, by Debian maintainers to create source package, but also by Debian users to generate uh, devs that are quite okay to use uh, internally. They are not uh, when you just uh, do gem to dev on it, it doesn't produce gems uh, devs that you can use uh, that you can that you can upload to Debian. It produces devs that you can probably use internally. So it just does everything, and so it builds the extension for 1.8, builds the extension for 1.9, and then it fails because uh, it can't run the test because of that. So it can't find the helper file. I will just continue building to. So in that case, it built. A source package, confirm using the um, uh, version three quilt uh, source for source format, and the deb there. Uh, strange. Why don't it clean? Oh, because I have to run it here. Okay. So it just uh, generates uh, all files based on what is in the in the gem. For example, if I look at control, uh, it uses uh, a gem description here to fill in the description field. So it needs to be edited, but it's still a good basis for uh, to, to start from there. It also uh, adds as a comment the dependencies that were listed uh, in the gem. So even if it Probably it's not completely true, but uh, it's still a good basis. So I'm going to fix the um, 
uh, test star failings. So what it does also is that there are two ways to run tests. The first one is to just list the test files that are also provided in the jam usually. So that's just a YAML file with a list of test files. And that doesn't work in that case because uh, they use uh, uh, so they use requ require uh, helper well it should be test uh, slash helper so I could just fix them all and it would work uh, the easier way is to use the other way of running tests uh, with gem 2 deb which is to add a uh, Ruby tests dot rb file in the Debian dir. So I will remove that one. And edit that one. So I just need So this just says that I will load every file in the spec or test dir. And that's usually enough, except that in my case, I need to add a test to the load path so that it finds uh, the helper file. So building the extensions. And then it runs the test for 1.8. It runs the test for 1.9. And it worked. Okay, so with that I get a quite working, uh, quite clean source package with minimal work. Uh, so the last thing to do is um, we want to transition from this package, so we have to add trans transitional packages for those packages. That's, a, that's, a, that's the source package to the binary packages, so we need to override them. And I can do that like that. So there's a script called uh, gen ruby trans packet packages that just generates a control file snippet that you need. And then uh, I just need to copy paste this that's for the package that is being replacing and that's a traditional package and so with that I get uh, my clean package with all the traditional packages with the correct version etc any questions about that Wait for the microphone. Um, you said you were trying to support um, Chem2Tab for internal users. Mm -hmm. um, now we have some applications, and each application uses a different gem, gem set. Mm -hmm. So we would need to uh, have multiple versions of the same gem in our repositories. Mm -hmm. Do you have a solution for that? No, um, the way it is solved uh, by RubyGems itself is really ugly. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, one thing that we need to force Upstream to do is to maintain some level of compatibility and uh, use, I mean, we, we can't support uh, uh, many versions of the same gem and it's just crazy that it, it works like that. I think it's improving. There are less and less problems about that in the Ruby community. Do we have an example of uh, applications that uh, require specific versions of gems? Um, the recent example was uh, the JSON gem, mm -hmm. where there were some uh, libraries explicitly depending on JSON lower than 1.5, mm -hmm. and some depending on JSON larger than 1.5. Mm -hmm. um, so this caused problems for us. Yeah. But um, I think that for that case, for example, the only reasonable solution is to force people to migrate to the new version because we can't support uh, every old API. Uh. Yeah, uh, I understand that this would 
Devon, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Um, but for us, where we are shipping our internal applications, mm. it would be nice uh, to just can install yeah. them parallelly for the moment. Yeah, I think this kind of migrations uh, well stems for, from the model the Ruby developers are trying to push that their, the gem packaging system uh, is meant to support uh, uh, the co coexistence of different versions. And well, part of the fighting that mainly Lucas has been done is that we cannot do that in the VM. So well, yeah, uh, do, doing that kind of migration for us, I think it's close to impossible. Yeah. Other comments? Just have one slide remaining, I think. So yeah, uh, so other things happening in the Ruby world in Debian is that we have newer upstream releases to package. So currently we have 192 in unstable, which is uh, almost ready, except we need to back backport lots of things from uh, 193 because they forgot to include it in the release. Uh, and 193 is already in experimental, so if you want to experiment with it, uh, it's easy. What's missing there is a way to solve the, the fact that um, uh, in the Ruby, uh, well, interpreter world, they have something called the Ruby compatibility version, which is about the same as the uh, uh, SO version, SO name, sort of. <laughs> Um, and so uh, you can't co-install 192 and 193. And currently in Debian, the package are numbered with the uh, Ruby compatibility version, which means that the package are versioned 191 and not 192. So it's a bit confusing because we install Ruby 191 and you get Ruby 192. Uh, <laughs> the problem is, uh, well, I tried to uh, to push upstream so that they would change the compatibility version at each major uh, new release so that the 193 would be um, compatibility version 193 but they said it was our problem to fix and well so what we still need to do is uh, add some uh, some sugar on top of the existing packages so that you can install Ruby 193 and get Ruby 193 which probably means just introducing Another package that depends on Ruby 191, but just to make people uh, happy about that and introduce sim links and stuff like that. It still needs to be done. There's also work on a Ruby policy to document everything that changed with uh, gem 2 deb uh, Vincent Fourmont is leading this. And there's also work on packaging other interpreters, so that's mainly uh, JRuby, which is currently non-free because it, it uses uh, a ton of jars that needs to be packaged in Debian. And um, Ruby News, uh, which, is, which uses uh, LLVM, which has been ITP'd, but is currently in uh, what uh, people call cookie leaking mode. Uh, cookie leaking mode is um, when uh, someone is uh, in a community uh, is doing something but not really doing it and each time someone says oh I'd like to help the, um, that person says oh no need to help me I have something almost ready that I will upload in two days and it has been like that for <laughs> they just leak the cookie so that someone else cannot have it and it has been happening playing like that since uh, six months but since nobody is sufficiently motivated to take it over it stays like that <laughs> Uh, so, we have some time remaining for question and discussions. So, some things I'd like to discuss is um, the default version for Widzy. Uh, so, the current status upstream for 1.8 is that it will be uh, into normal maintenance. So probably we will have a, another 1.8 release or 1.8.7 release uh, before June 2012. And we'll get security support until June 2013. Uh, but it would probably make sense to at least consider switching to 1.9 and the um, best candidate is uh, 1.9.3 because 1.9.2 won't be maintained uh, uh, more than a few months uh, from, from now. Uh, so, well, that's open for discussion. Uh, something else is, uh, well, gem to deb if you have tried it and uh, have uh, questions, comments, uh, rants about it, don't hesitate. 
Um, if you are maintaining uh, Ruby packages but outside the team, I would be interested interested to hear uh, what you are doing that and what's missing in the team to make you switch to the team because we would really appreciate to have you in the team and uh, helping. Um, uh, Gunnar can probably say something about web applications packaging. I'm totally clueless about web applications. Uh, and then, uh, well, if you want to work on some things together during DevConf, uh, just say it. Well, given that uh, Lucas specifically uh, called on me, uh, yeah, on previous DevConfs, uh, we have uh, had a similar talk uh, both to this one. And, uh, well, I proposed it uh, at one point, uh, mainly targeted at, uh, uh, at trying to get Rails things going easier in, in Debian. Uh, well, Ruby has many web, uh, web frameworks. One of them is Rails, maybe the most popular. But uh, uh, for well, ma many reasons, both internal and external to the Rails community, uh, more are getting attention, uh, such as uh, camping and uh, MERV. And well, Rails is migrating to become a stack of uh, web-oriented things, uh, which I think is good. Now, currently, the status of uh, those uh, packages is not as good as it should. Uh, also, bec because of incom incompatibilities with the, mind, uh, the mindset uh, and the worldview that, uh, that they have. I mean, this uh, thing that they insist on us running everybody, their latest release of everything, uh, it makes it hard to, to work with uh, Debian. So right now we are still packaging only the 2.3.8, I think, or 2.3.5 vers version of Rails, uh, while the 3.0 uh, has been uh, stable for quite a, uh, quite a long time. But I think nobody within the team is uh, motivated to, to, to package the new one, which includes very, very large ch changes. Now, we have managed to, to have at least one uh, Rails application packaged in, in Debian. It's uh, Redmine. Now, the amount of bugs that Redmine has uh, triggered is tremendous because, uh, because it's so hard to get uh, right. So, well, at least for my work, uh, I am uh, packaging some libraries. I am not currently tracking or trying to, to work with any complete systems, but uh, I know some people are precisely interested in that. Well, for Redmine, uh, one thing can be said is that uh, there was a huge number of bugs, which also indicates a huge number of people interested in using it on Debian. So it looks like yeah, people are not, well, are not really happy with the uh, gem install way of installing uh, applications such, such as Redmine. Other questions? So what do you think about uh, 193 uh, by default, for example? OK, so for the, now you're bringing this up. Um, I'd uh, especially like to see 1.9 as the new default. Mm -hmm. um, so our internal applications all switched to 1.9 already, and we haven't seen uh, we have seen some breakage, but not a lot. So uh, most gems uh, appear to have been converted already, or just work as is. Uh, just some very very old gems uh, break. Mm -hmm. So uh, that should be nice. Uh, Another thing I'd uh, like to bring up is um, what are you doing for the uh, for libraries that are packaged uh, that are merged in uh, standard lib, which are also available um, bes uh, besides of standard lib, especially now that uh, gems is, is in standard lib and Drake is in standard lib, and there are significant updates. Yeah, uh, so. Uh, I don't remember, but we have a plan for it. <laughs> and since I don't have the internet, it will be hard to look up the wiki page about it. Uh, Gunnar, maybe you remember what we do about uh, libs that are merged in the standard library? Or, li or libs that are re removed from the standard library, because this also happens. No, uh, I, I haven't really worked with, uh, with that part. No, well, uh, if you're looking into, into it, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask what you say. Uh, it really makes sense to migrate to 1.9 as a default. There are many things that are basically broken in 1.8, starting with the UTF support. 
uh, I've found so many bugs that uh, that could be averted if we uh, is change the default and uh, with the way one, one of the things that uh, are most li nicely solved with uh, gem to dev is that the fact uh, well yeah, uh, you mentioned it, but uh, I, I have to restress it. Uh, currently, well, with the previous infra infrastructure, we were building one binary package per interpreter. Uh, and having one .8 as a default meant that many of my packages, if they didn't build cleanly at the first pass win with 1.9, I thought, oh, fuck it, and uh, discarded 1.9 and built only 1.8. So we have many packages with, which are currently not available for 1.9, and that creates a, like a, a vicious circle because the developers don't uh, migrate up, the users don't, don't migrate up, and uh, well, the language feel the, feels the same. But in Ruby's uh, community, we, where they don't really value stability in some things, uh, many behaviors start diverging. So we have some bugs that are triggered by specific version combinations. Uh, and I, I think we can avoid them perfectly by by, by making the switch. Uh, well, I was looking for the yeah, plan yeah. for. Well, uh, I can look it up on the list archives. And who are you? Sorry, so I can forward it to you. Who are you? Who, who am I? <laughs> uh, I'm Christian. Um, I'm a DM. Okay. Well, send me an email and then I can send you the pointer to the mail okay. about uh, our plan. You can tell if it's, if it's okay. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, well, thank you. <laughs>